Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is the Fractal Design Torrent, a fantastic mid-tower case with some really interesting highlights. And this is a short video to talk to you about my experiences with it, but first, some peel. Now, if you don't know already, the Fractal Torrent is essentially a fantastic airflow orientated case and a really interesting one. Gamers Nexus awarded it like the best case of 2021 and it is a really interesting case for a number of different reasons. It's available in different variants, including ones with both tempered glass and not, and either black or white, and you can get one model in RGB, but I got the white one because I thought it was particularly nice looking. There are a number of interesting highlights to this that include, you know, pre-installed fans you have two 180 mil fans at the front and three 140 mil fans installed on the bottom you'll also notice that it has an rgb light strip and it also has some really nice finishes to it now i'm going to do a more in-depth video where i show off the complete build process so if you're interested in building something similar to what i've created and i'll sh link to that video in the description so you can see the in-depth look at it but in this video i'm going to talk to you about the highlights and features of the case and what i liked about it and what i didn't and the things that are interesting. Now this is a case that's designed really for airflow and in my mind it only really has two different possible setups. You either use air fans as I have with an air tower CPU cooler or you go for a full liquid cooling system and the reason I say that is it essentially has two places where you can mount radiators so you can mount up to a 420 millimeter radiator on the front of the case and on the bottom which means you can't really use an all-in-one cooler on it because if you front mount a 320 or 420 mil cooler radiator on the front of it you're obviously then restricting the potential airflow and you're losing those 280 mil fans which are otherwise going to be sucking in cold air in a magnificent way you then also have intake fans on the bottom that will obviously be bringing cold air into the case but as you'll see, the exhaust setup is kind of weird because as standard, you don't actually get an exhaust fan. And what you'll see in this video is that the power supply unit actually sits in that top tray at the top. So essentially the hot air is venting into your power supply unit and then out the back of the case. And if you don't purchase an additional fan, as I've done, you have some restrictions there. There are some really nice highlights to the setup though, and some fantastic design aesthetics and features, things that include like ultra fine mesh paneling on the front, a really nice sort of overall design. It's also really lightweight. One of the things I noticed when I was picking it up, moving it around for build process is very light case, which is sometimes not great because the top cover, for example, which I'll show you in a minute, feels quite flimsy. But overall, generally, the build quality seems really good and it's really well thought out for a number of different reasons that I'll show you in a minute. You'll see another removable dust tray at the bottom and another highlight of this is it sits really high off the desk. The feet are nice and tall, which means that you have a lot of potential air intake at the bottom. The fact they've also included massive two 180 mil fans on the front of the thing means that it runs quiet and also gives you really good cooling and also then you have the three additional 140 mil fans on the bottom that's something you don't really see very often you don't see cases with fans included but as i said you really need to purchase an extra one for the rear because otherwise you're just pushing all the cold air into the case and then it warms up it rises and tries to escape and is going to go through the power supply unit because that is installed face down into the case which then obviously sucks warm air through it and blows it out of the back which is a bit of an oddity and you can see the process for that here is basically two thumb screws holding this top plate in place and this is one of the things i didn't like about the case particularly is that top panel feels a bit flimsy and cheap by comparison to the rest of the case there's a minor point and not something that should be an issue over time i don't think unless you storing things on top of it because obviously you're only really taking it off to put the power supply unit in and you probably won't be putting it on and off very often so and underneath there you'll see there's space for quite a large power supply unit and quite a lot of different cabling you also have ports for things like the liquid cooling so if you went down the liquid cooling route which i'd say a full loop liquid cooled system would be the most logical thing to do then you have the space to do that here and then you can see a Corsair RM850X and just sort of a size demonstration of where that's going to fit and that's what I used for my build and you can run the cables into that gap and then down the side and into the rear 
it does have some space in the rear paneling although as i'll show in a minute i don't feel like it was enough for the number of cables that i was building what you will notice is that you do have the ability to mount two hard disk drives two 3.5 inch hard drives and four ssds potentially so there's also room for other things back here if you want a fan control system or other things but you will notice that it also has its own PWM fan controller on the very bottom left there which is another highlight to the build now the case fans don't come pre-connected to that so you actually have to work out the logic for plugging it in which isn't necessarily a problem it's a bit of an oddity to include the fans and not have them plugged in immediately but you can plug them into these four pin connections here and then you just simply have a power connection for SATA power and then another cable that plugs into your motherboard on obviously a header for fan headers as capable of controlling PWM fans and then you have control for multiple fans and you'll note there's more ports there than there are fans in the case so you do have flexibility to install more in future you then have multiple different drive bays that you can take off so you can install four SSDs if you want to one of the things that I think is worth noting though is that if you do install four you're obviously going to have four SATA power connections and the data connections to your motherboard you're going to end up with a lot more cables back here and i feel like unless you're amazing at cable management you might end up with quite a mess and i'll show you my mess in a minute because i'm not particularly good at cable management i am also thinking about doing a full liquid cooled system in this case at some point and i'm a bit concerned about the number of cables that are going to be back here but otherwise as standard with a standard setup standard fans just one hard drive one ssd and NVMe drives at the front. It's not been too bad, and it is nice in terms of the number of loops. You'll see there are multiple different, both Velcro ties and hardline metal loops for the various plastic ties that you can use to tie things down. And you can see I've done some job here. It's not perfect. I'm still working on it and repositioning and changing and making it a bit neater. But the space in some of the areas is a bit tricky. The other thing that I found that I'll talk about in a minute is just the setup of that rear fan and the distance that that PWM controller is set at the bottom is a bit problematic. But the end result is really nice looking, I think, and I have a reasonably good setup here, although obviously we have a lot more intake than exhaust with a single exhaust fan. Using a large air tower CPU cooler means that I've got cold air shooting in from those 280 mil fans. They're going straight through the Noctua cooler, which also has two 140mm fans, and then out the back with that extra 140mm fan that I purchased here. Now, I made the mistake of purchasing a white bladed fan, and the rest of them are black, but I actually thought this still looks quite nice with the contrasted design. I'll leave all the specs for this case in the description so you can purchase the right fan should you want to, but the standard fans are the GP14 PWN fans from Fractal. And if you want to go RGB, you can get the Prisma AL14, which is 140 mil fans, as an option. Obviously, if you're swapping out all the fans for RGB, you're spending a lot more money. Now, one of the problems that I had when installing this rear fan is I found that that cable wasn't long enough to reach the controller. Now, this isn't necessarily an issue because you could plug it into the chassis or system fan headers on the motherboard. But what I wanted to do is get that cable out of sight and out the back. One of the things that you can see is there are nice little holes around the case that it's really easy to run cables into. So keeping things neat and tidy at the front was fairly easy. But the cable itself wouldn't reach the controller, so I ended up having to use an extension lead. So that's something worth bearing in mind. However, the standard fans that are pre-installed there's more than enough length there, but as you will see, none of them are actually pre-installed, so you do have to run the cabling yourself. It's a small complaint. If I've seen other cases where fans are already pre-installed, then they usually come connected up to any control boxes that were included, so it's a bit odd that I had to plug them in, but a minor thing. And again, you'll see from the close-up shots, there are various different holes in specific areas. You can see, for example, on the bottom left here and at the bottom where near the fans are, where it's really easy to run cables through and keep them out of sight. And you can also do that with the front fans, as I'll show you in a second. And the, the connections for that is really great. And also just having a controller and not having to worry about plugging all the fans in to the various ports on your motherboard or thinking about Y splitters, for example, to split two different fans into one single connection to make your life a bit easier does make life a lot simpler. 
You can see me running the top fan cable up through a tiny little hole up into the top of the case, then back down again here. Again, that keeps things at the front really neat. And what you will also see and notice from the clips is just how much space there is in this case at the front. There's a lot of room here. There's plenty of room for a full liquid cooled seal system. It's obviously designed for radiators and pumps and reservoirs and all sorts of things. You can also note from the specs that it's able to take thick large 420 mil radiators on the front and the bottom so there are options however as i said if you think about all in one cooler the front mounting is the best logical one because you don't want to put your pump higher than the radiator as gamers nexus has pointed out in the past so really only air cooling or a full liquid loop is the way to go with this one now you have plenty of room for a power supply unit installation here. This is the RM850X, as I said earlier, but you do have space for a full ATX power supply and that's up to 230 millimeters as well. So there's plenty of room there and also the cabling. Now again, you can run the cabling through various different loops and there is a number of different Velcro ties in place down here which makes life a bit simpler and I do like there's a number of Velcro ties I've supplied and also obviously plastic cable ties as well so you have a number of options there. I have a bit of a mishmash of cables going on back here and there is a reason for that because I essentially wanted to use extender cables as you will have seen from the final build with some cable mod cabling to uh, allow for a better final aesthetic on the front. I'll leave all the specifications of this build in the description as well if you're curious. This is the ROG Z690 formula motherboard, which is a really good looking motherboard and that you mostly can't see because of the sheer size of the air tower cooler that I'm using, but still a very nice looking motherboard and obviously uh, Core i9-12900K is powering that with 32 gigs of Kingston's Beast DDR5 RAM. But what you'll notice is the large space that we have in the surrounding areas. And this is an ATX motherboard. You can go up to EATX in terms of the size, but you'll see there's plenty of room for managing the cables, both at the top and the bottom and the sides as well, and plenty of space for the graphics card. So the graphics card I'm installing is a gigabyte RTX 3090 OC Vision. A uh, reasonably large card. If you've seen my Leon Lee Air Mini video that I did recently, you've seen just how big that card was and how much space to cup in there. But as you see, there's plenty of room going on in this case in terms of the length of the GPU that you can fit in there. You can get up to 461 millimeter total length. And again, all the specs will be in the description if you want to find out more about that. But the ideal setup here, I mean, obviously we are sucking cold air in from the bottom with 340 mil fans and blowing it straight onto the GPU, which is then exhausting out the rear. And it has some nice cooling going on from the front of the case with those large fans as well. But you will note there are various different mounting points. Now, another point of highlight, unfortunately, I didn't get a clip of, but this case includes a GPU mounting bracket to help with sagging problems. And you'll note that there are various different slits on the right hand side just behind the graphics card on the rear of the case. And basically this little device hooks into those and screws in using the thumb screw that goes in the back. And then you can position it so it basically pushes a small rubber bracket on the underside of the GPU. And it's actually not really visible when it's installed. and Obviously that helps with the sag and prevents sagging and it ends up making it look really nice. You'll probably see it in some of these other clips, but it basically ensures everything looks wonderful and nice and tidy. And it's a really nice addition. And I think there are multiple different uh, clever additions to this case that make it stand out like that. Obviously the inclusion of the fans as standard is brilliant bonus. The lack of that rear one is a bit of an oddity, but it's not too much to buy an extra 140 mil fan. And if you're considering going full liquid cooling, you might be swapping everything out anyway. But things like the GPU mounting bracket, the clever positioning of all the sorts of holes and the various different points for it. Also, just the sheer number of holes at the rear it should lead to some natural exhausting of hot air too. And uh, overall, the aesthetic on it is really nice. Now, I really wish this one came with RGB. Unfortunately, it only seems to be available with the black one, but I think the finish on it still looks pretty fantastic. And it's a really good looking case. Now, if you're interested, I found that running this uh, test, I managed to get 
up to 98 degrees C with the 12900K. Now, I don't think that's a gripe against the case or the cooler. That CPU is a really hot beast, and that was with Cinebench, so it's putting it under quite a bit of load. But I also ran Heaven Benchmark to test out the GPU thermals, and I found, generally speaking, that when playing games, I was getting around 60 or 70 degrees C on both CPU and GPU, depending on what sort of games I'm playing. So it actually runs reasonably cool, and not terribly hot and obviously your experience may vary depending on what CPU you're using and the graphics card and even the fans that you're installing but in this setup I'm pretty happy with the results and the overall finish. One of the other things worth discussing is the sound levels versus the cooling performance. Obviously there's a multitude of fans in here with this airflow setup design and this is with the side panel off mostly to avoid the reflections from my light and I just wanted to demonstrate, I will put the side panel on in a second, but this is with the fans running at the standard sort of quiet speed set with an armory crate and I'm getting around 50 decibels out of it. And then I thought I'd just put them all onto turbo. So this is with all the fans spinning at max speed and it ends up putting the de decibels up to about 60 to 64 decibels. So it's not especially loud. I think actually under standard day-to-day -day use, where the fans don't need to ramp up to turbo obviously you can find that the fans run relatively quietly to the point that actually i found that my platter hard drive in the rear of the case is making more noise than the fans are it's actually noticeable when that's spinning up versus the overall fan noise which is pretty impressive and they the airflow is good enough I don't find that I have to put these fans up to a high speed obviously they're PWM controlled so you can adjust the speed of them within the BIOS and within the Armour Create software for example but generally speaking I haven't had to mess around with that too much and it's been pretty effective you'll see with the side panel on we're looking at around 54 decibels so not particularly loud so all told a fantastic case and a wonderful purchase and a great one to build in i've been thoroughly enjoying it if you'd like to find out more about this case be sure to check out the other video where we're going to a bit more depth in terms of what i built how i built it and all the various steps of it so if you're looking to build something similar please have a look and check that out hopefully that will give you a bit more insight don't forget to check the description for all the specs and other information you might find useful and i'd like to take a moment to give an extra special thanks to my youtube members the special people that have helped support the channel those are me keyboard raw j shank 007 sir spawns a lot star rastins beast of bunny and Aaron Yarden, I'm greatly appreciated. Also, if you've made it this far in the video and you've enjoyed it, please help me out by smashing that like button, subscribing if you're not already, and just dropping a comment to let me know what you thought and if there's anything else you'd like to see in future build videos. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Thanks for watching. This has been the Provoke Prawn. Hope you found this video useful, interesting, hilarious, or otherwise. Take a look at these other videos that I think you might find interesting as well. And have a look at the description for links and other information you might find useful. Click that join button to see the benefits of being a member of my YouTube channel. And most importantly, have a great life.